Today, let's see how to create interactive particles in Unity. The use application of this effect can be quite interesting and vary a lot, from the simple leaves reacting to the character movement, or the smoke, to something a bit more complex like the living particles by Sign VFX available on the Unity Asset Store. Where the New Year sale has just begun, by the way, and where you can get unique packages for your games with an awesome discount. Don't miss out, links below. I especially recommend Feel if you want juicy feedbacks on your game, or A Star Pathfinding in case your enemies need to find their way. So, without further ado, let's see a simple version of the interactive particles. Let's begin by creating a new VFX graph with right click on a folder. On Unity 6 we have these template options. You can select the empty one, I will guide you through. Just rename it VFX Graph Interactive Particles and drag and drop it to the scene. And if you press the edit button, you can open VFX Graph and this is what we get. Let me hide the backboard. And with spacebar, let's begin with the spawn. And after the spawn comes the initialized particle and then the update particle, and finally the output particle where we render the particle itself. On the spawn, let's begin with a burst of let's say 100 particles. They are overlapping with each other, all in the same position at the center of the world. Let's make sure they face the camera. Down here with an orient block, face camera plane, here we go. If you want to get rid of this cut, of this intersection with the ground, you can turn on use soft part. Let's increase the capacity of this VFX graph. Say the bounds mode is manual. If this cube is outside of the camera, the particles won't be rendered. That's what this is for. And now let's make sure they spawn in a grid. So with the set position, down here we have sequential, three-dimensional. Very useful to create grids, for example. On count Y, let's say only one unit. And since they are intersecting the ground, let's push the VFX graph up on the Y axis. And down here on the axis X, Y and Z, we can control the spacing. For example, on count X, let's say it's 8. As a matter of fact, let's say it's 10 by 10 on the Z and on the X, since we have 100 particles. And then we can control its spacing down here. Right, so let's create a huge grid and say the spacing is 10 on the X, on the Y and on the Z and the count is 40 on the X and on the Z probably we won't see anything because this grid is huge and 40 by 40 should give 1600 particles we can see all of them because the capacity is set to 1024 let's duplicate it to 2048 here we go, we have a nice grid now going on now that we have a grid of particles most of this effect happens on the update particle context. And in this case, I'm going to use a sphere to displace the particles. And we want to measure distance between each particle and the center of the sphere. And then we will compare it to its radius to see if they are inside the sphere. First, we need to know the position of each particle. And we are going to measure it with the sphere by using the distance node distance between two vectors. Now let's compare the result. If it's greater than the radius of the sphere, then they are outside. Let's use a branch. If it's true, they are outside, we can say it's minus 1. If it's false, they are inside, we can say it's 1. They will go up. And we are going to save this information in a custom attribute. See, we have these attributes here, all of these built-in attributes, but we can also create custom ones. In this case, we want a float called deform position. It's more of a selector. We can drag and drop this to the update particle so we can set the deform position by dragging a line from here. And we can quickly test this out by creating a set position on the output particle where first we need to know where it was with a get position where the particle was and then we will add 
let's make sure the B option is a vector tree. And then we will add this deform position only on the Y axis. And connect this to the set position. And you will immediately notice a couple of particles really high, while the others are really low compared to the center of the VFX graph. We could push VFX graph up, but instead on the branch, let's say that to all the particles that are outside of the sphere, let's say it's zero. So we don't change their position for now. And here we go. If we go back here to the sphere and move it around, we are beginning to see an interaction between particles and sphere. This is kind of the basic setup to interact with particles. And another cool thing you can already do with this is play with color. If we use a set color on the output, we can then lerp between two values, which means we are going to interpolate between two colors. Let's go to the properties here and create color inside and another one for the color outside. Color inside the sphere, color outside the sphere. We can set the alpha to 1, even though the set color only receives three values, the RGB. Let's say it's blue, increase intensity for the colors inside, and the others can be white. Color inside goes to the X, color outside goes to the Y, just like this, and connect to the start color. And if you play with the S value, you can lerp between the two colors, right? As long as it doesn't go below zero or above one. So we need to control this with a smooth step, which is basically a null interpolation. It's a little bit smoother in terms of curve instead of being linear. X is going to be radius and the Y is going to be radius with something added. And that something is a flow to control the color range fade. Drag and drop it, connect to the add and S will control the interpolation between X and Y. And we are going to use the distance to the center of the sphere. And here we go. The color range fade will do exactly this. It will create a fade around the sphere. Very cool result. Let me just change the color to something red, more distinguishable. Here we go, looking nice. Let's save this, don't forget to save from time to time. Now let's see how we can control this sphere with a 3D object on the scene. If you right click on this sphere, you can convert it to a property. Let's call it just sphere and make sure it's exposed so we can see right here on the inspector, right? The way this works now is by adding a component here called VFX property binder. We are going to bind the sphere with an object. In this case, we are going to bind with a sphere collider. Down here, we can control the property name. In this case, we need to make sure it matches the name we are given to the sphere, which is sphere. So that's OK. Now let's create a 3D sphere. I'm going to disable the mesh render because I don't want to see the sphere rendered. I just want its collider. And then we can drag the sphere to the target. And here we go. If we move the sphere on the scene, it's now controlling the sphere inside VFX graph. That's why we use this property binder. You can bind lots of things, even transforms. This is how you can control the VFX graph through a character. Looking good. Now let's see how we can smooth this because they are snapping the particles. Every time the spheres moves around, they snap to one. Let's animate that. Let's make sure that we use a float for the follow speed. How fast we want these particles to react. Default value of 1. And let me push this backwards and say drag the follow speed. And we can multiply this result with the follow speed and with the delta time game. If we were to connect this directly to the deform position, it won't work because we need to first add the deform position itself. Let me open the backboard and drag and drop the deform position. 
connected to the add. And this is what we get. As you can see, the particles are being displaced and they don't go back to their original position. It's kind of a cool effect where this would be useful, I'm sure. But in our case, we want them to go back to their original position. So, And we don't want them to keep on going up forever. So we can use a clamp or a saturate node. It's going to clamp their value between 0 and 1. And once they reach 1, they stop. Let me just reorganize this a little bit because we are getting several nodes here and it can get messy. So I'm going to create some gaps here so it's easier to read. But yeah, every time we move the sphere now, particles are animated. They don't go up forever, but they don't go back to their original position. That's because back here on the branch, if they are outside of the sphere, we want to push them back by a value of minus one. And here we go. Now, every time we move the sphere around, the particles, they are reacting to the sphere, passing by them, and they go back to their original position. <laughs> Looking very nice. It's quite an interesting effect. And there you have it, the basis of interactive particles. You can build on top of these and create very kind of different motions with 3D objects even and whatnot. It's pretty cool. I left this project available on my Patreon's page, links below, where you can get access to a huge library of visual effects for your game. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month, and a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Enkra, Bitter, Ashkan, Kalkali, David Molina, Diego Marx, Frosty40, Genetic Punk, Grant Clark, Grub Lab, Ivan Jacobi, Jade, Ginuga4, Casey Miller, Leandro Di Riccio, Leah Nolt, Matt Morn, Oitsk, Phil Kozel, Pierre Mario Roux, Pradipsen, Sanofer, The Static Samurai, Tiago Paiva, Vulcan S, Mary Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Poilian, Yogesh Shukla, Zazu, Jao Barcade, and me, Jay Kim. Thank you all very much for your support, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video, bye!